I'll be walking you through how I made this painting using the quick tools, add-ons, and blender. Okay, I'll start out with the project brief, which is basically a Minecraft savanna village, and it's an establishing shot with realistic and grounded style. So we're taking something that's like really blocky into something that's realistic and kind of like something that runs in Unreal Engine 4 or um, like live action film or something like that. But before we get into like the actual development, I want to discuss some principles first. So the first one is the mid ground to background. QuickTools is built for creating geo that's made to be seen in a specific distance from the camera. And the sweet spot for this is the mid ground to background. And you never really use QuickTools for up close elements as a photo texture will always have superior detail. And this is what I mean by that. When it's near to the camera, photo textures will always have much more detail than the best 3D models out there. That's why it's like first in line. Then the next one is the mega scans. Scan data is usually more, like more superior compared to the, your standard 3D models that you can find or you can model yourself. Um, or models that you can find in like online uh, marketplaces such as Sketchfab and things like that. So these ones are the two main um, things that you want to target when you're using quick tools because um, everything else it just can't compete there. I mean you can still use quick tools for like the farther ones but that would just be you know kind of wasting time since the farther the model is, the, the less pixels um, it would actually take up in the screen, in the final render. So that means a texture brush or another photo texture that, that's really rough is going to save you more time than just, you know, modeling out something really detailed but uh, in the end only occupying a small amount of area or like it's kind of like 5 by 5 pixels. So um, this is the sweet spot right here, these two areas. So you're going to be looking out for ways that you can use quick tools to target these two specific areas. Okay. Next up is the proper context. So um, of course, uh, quick tools is made or originally made to be used in the context of making concept art. So really quick stuff and not the like final illustration or whatnot um, but yeah it's only a tool and it can be used for a wide range of cases but for the majority it's a simply it's simply a 3d tool primarily used for sketching out rough keyframes and concept sketches emphasis on rough and sketches since quick tools has limitations on creating detail that good topology high-risk textures with proper uvs provides Artists usually use this for just blocking out a 3D scene to flesh out the overarching geo as you'll be painting over the render later on in the workflow. So this is like the general pipeline, right? Or the general workflow where you start out looking for references, then you thumbnail first, do sketches in 2D, then you think about the kit. In, in, in this case, or like in the most ideal case, you'll be thinking about the kit here. I'll be talking about the kit uh, later on, but kit in this sense means the kit that you start out with when you're going to kit bash. Then next up is choosing the thumbnail. So once you've done your thumbnails, like the you explore the compositions, what shot you want to do, you'll be choosing the one that you want to render and like polish. Then you take that and you recreate that thumbnail in 3D. And first you go set up the camera in a way that reflects the thumbnail the best. Then this is mainly the, um, this is the most 3D stuff that you do in this workflow. So you start with modeling and this is where these three things come together. And you use these three things to make the kit. Then after you made the kit, you go to kit bashing. Then this one, um, it can actually be doesn't necessarily have to be after um, kit bashing. It can also be before, since um, depending on the kit and like many different 
um, cert- many different variables. Uh, it might be easier to texture it before kit bashing, or it might be easier after. And then that's where you use quick texture. Then after doing the render, you'll be fixing the seams and the like, color correction and all that fun stuff that you do in in Photoshop. So this is you. Go, this is when you go back to 2D once again. So you start in 2D, sketch it out, you recreate it in 3D, then you go back to 2D and polish it even more. The next step is the next step is the quadrant of how I see um, how I see which elements of the composition would be easier to do. In this quadrant, we have like two axes. One is the perspective one, and the other is how organic or synthetic the element is. So for here in this area over here uh things over here are much easier to do in 3d because they have extreme perspective and they're very synthetic and um you can imagine this is where you would place sci-fi elements lots of greeble stuff very complicated geometry and very synthetic because you know it's all man-made it all has rigid perspective while here in the organic this is where you get the mountains so uh, if it were extreme perspective and like really organic this is where you would see um, a bird's eye view of the mountains or say a worm's eye view of some sort of jungle and things over here on the top left and the bottom right um, you can get away with either so you can get away with doing them all solely in 3d or solely in 2d but here this is where you would usually you would prefer to do it mainly or primarily in a specific context so this one you would preferably do in 3d this one you would preferably do it in 2d so um since i showed the project brief this is where the this is the final image right so we have some elements here the trees the acacia trees then the actual structures and houses and there's the people so they're largely two elements and those people are like really far off that there's they're just a few bush strokes anyway so um we're gonna focus on the houses and like the, the acacia trees so where do you think this structure um uh, goes in it's relatively man-made yeah but um we only know like at at the time that i was making this we only know that it's an establishing shot so we don't know if it's extreme or flat but since it's an establishing shot we have a relatively good guess that it's on the extreme side since it has a wider field of view which means you get more information out of the place so it's likely to be more on the extreme perspective now we have the acacia tree now this one is organic of course and at the same time it's also kind of in the extreme perspective since um this is an, es- an establishing shot but if you look at the final image you can actually see that i could have gotten away with just using a photo texture over here so i don't necessarily need to model it in 3d even though i did that's why this is um where it's placed it, it's kind of easy to do in 2d and it's also kind of easy to do in 3d so there's a there's an overlap over here so it boils down to i guess your preference on where you want to do this particular element and you can do you can do this to your own projects as well once you're thinking about the elements of the 3d scene that you're going to be working on so right now I'm currently making the first the first base structure or house that I'm going to be building on top of to make my kit for kit bashing later on. And it's good to think about it in terms of kit development since in concept art there's lots of especially in architecture there's lots of repeating elements which you can utilize and fill the space much easier when you think about it this way when you think about it in kits rather than individual elements that you need to populate the scene with to recreate 
what I'm doing. First you open quick curve using Ctrl F, then Ctrl D, you'll see this revolve section and you click Z because Z is the blue line which is going up. So we want to revolve around that axis and you just draw say something like this and you end up with this kind of shape. After that, I turned it off, then I use a square with a twirl or a twist I mean I mean so you can use the twist increase the twist um, and instead of view we need to align it to the surface control shift W what that's going to do is let us draw on top of this roof if I twist it more you can press control to increase like the mute the the influence or like the increments Press Y again. We need much more than that. Let's see if this works. There we go. Okay, so something like this. And I just turn down the width. And now I can basically do the same thing that I did on the video. Also, one other thing. Um, I also added a radial array to it. So I press Z again so that it does this array around um around the Z axis. That's how I basically did the roof for this and you can also do it for the logs instead of square you could just use round and do this thing and add some twigs and whatnot so that you can add the, the logs around the structure then i continued making the variations coming from that like base original design on the first house that i did and now I just added some support and here I added a version where it's slightly longer, like rectangular shape. And I used the boolean thing to remove that middle part. And actually I tried to edit it out, like deleted those vertices and faces. But sometimes um, when you're dealing with this much geo and really unclean topology um it's easier to just boolean it out rather than rather than manually modeling it after making the base kit that i had i started working on the textures quick texture wasn't developed um, at the time of this recording but since we have quick textures now you can just use the cube projection in quick texture to quickly texture your scene and the kit this is what the final render looks like and actually you can see that some of the things that i modeled um in like the very first parts of the video where i modeled the underside of the roof and things like that um it didn't get here you, you never see it here in the final render which is why it's important for you to start with um, the thumbnail and establish the composition first before modeling out the elements in here I didn't do that so I wasted a bit of time in making those underside of the roof but yeah despite that it's also a little bit of fun to not know the final outcome freestyling our way into the final concept because like there's some serendipity that happens or like as bob ross would call it happy accidents that you encounter when you're working like this you know you don't you're not working with a thumbnail you're just exploring the options that you have and mainly um, in my case, I was just exploring how I could use quick tools and the many different um, tools that I have might be so so to create this project that I'm working on. But of course, if you're working in a professional environment, you know, there's deadlines that you need to keep up with. I think having a thumbnail and having an established plan on where you're going with the project is much more efficient and you would waste less time um, when you do it that way. 
compared to this one. Also, another thing to note is you can see that I didn't really model any grass. I guess I didn't really see the point of making or using a particle scatter of some sort to create grass this dense in this type of environment when I could just, you know, use the texture brush that I have for it. And that's also the thing with texture brushes or textured elements, really, really textured elements. You can get away with using texture or photo textures for it. So um, things like grass, leaves, and, you know, um, trees and whatnot those are like prime elements that you could use photo textures and texture brushes for but yeah for the ones that need um high accuracy or really precise perspective for those are the things that you would likely need to use 3d modeling or 3d software for so in this case the the structures and houses here so once again this is the final image uh, after doing the paint over and i don't want this to be a final like rule book i don't want to restrict you of anything so this is just a peek at my workflow and how i use quick tools but i just wanted to share how some people struggled uh, grasping the concept of this and hopefully this helped you in understanding that and yeah that's about it so if you enjoyed this um, let me know down in the comments and uh, if you'd like to see more make sure to subscribe <laughs>